This is Dr. Saurabh Galagli in Monterey, California. It's January of 2024, and I'm going to narrate my technique for a far lateral disc herniation done using the endoscope. In my personal opinion, this is a very good case to do early in the learning curve because the pathology is located outside of the foramen, and therefore you don't need to traverse through the foramen. A foraminoplasty is not required, and in general, you're staying outside of the spinal canal. So this is going to be the case that we're going to discuss today. It's a far lateral disc herniation located here at the L3-4 level on the left side, causing a concurrent radiculopathy that has not responded to conservative care. Uh, I'll walk you through my technique for targeting. What I like to do initially is take the preoperative MRI scan and establish a trajectory using the digital calipers from the pathology to the skin and then measure the horizontal distance from the midline to that starting point. However, there's a caveat here. The size and the shape of the abdomen of patients changes significantly from the supine position in the MRI scanner to the prone position on the operating table. So I use this just as a way of getting my mind thinking about what this trajectory is going to look like. In clinical practice, I have actually found this technique called the double facet technique to be more useful, where I estimate the AP size of the facet in my mind's eye, I create two of those, and that will be the radiographic starting point of the um, needle seen in the lateral x-ray. So that schematically looks like this. Uh, here we see two facets, and generally that's exactly the same angle. I begin by taking an, a, I, I begin by taking a single orthogonal AP x-ray of the spine and establish the center line of the disc, and I then swing the x-ray into the lateral position and I use the line that was drawn on the skin to establish the center line of the beam of the fluoroscopy and then take a lateral x-ray. Here, a representative fluoroscopic picture at the 4-5 level is shown. There's one facet. The second facet will be here. The starting point is two facets posterior to the posterior annulus in line with the disc space. I compress the skin slightly with the use of the switching stick and then verify my starting point as seen here. I then introduce a spinal needle at a shallower angle than I would anticipate based upon my preoperative templating and dock that needle on the facet complex. After feeling the positive stop of the needle on the facet complex, I back my hand up to clear the fascia, lift it and advance again now docking further ventrally on the facet complex, and then back the needle up one final time and feel the needle skive off of the ventral surface of the facet and pop into the foramen. Once the nitinol wire then goes into the foramen, the dilator is then inserted. And what I like to feel here is the resistance of the dilator on the bottom, on the ventral surface of the facet complex. And once that's in place, the next step here is to insert the, the cannula. So I like to use this cork, corkscrew technique where I start with the open aspect of the cannula facing up into the midline. Uh, insert that until the, um, until the near edge of the opening stops on the facet complex. And then corkscrew the cannula in one final time in order to get it to dock on top of the, um, on top of the disc herniation. So the orientation here is that the cannula opening is facing down. However, the scope is looking up. So this is a relatively constricted view, but this establishes an artificial horizon where the long axis of the dura is going like this. And so we are appropriately oriented and we're not gonna lose visual cues here. So once we've got this view established, what we'll do is we'll use the bipolar cautery device to shrink around the periphery of the annulus to clean up the epidural fat and the veins that are usually sitting on top of the annulus here, recognizing that the pathology in this situation is probably located just underneath and behind us. And so once we've got this initial hemostasis achieved, what we'll do is we're going to use a technique that the way I describe it when I teach it is it's like an aerobatic flying technique called a split S where we're going to roll the entire camera 
and the entire scope inverted. So this is a video here of two F-16 fighter jets after an aerial refuel executing a split S where they're going to roll completely inverted and then look through the canopy in order to execute the, the, the dive. So you're going to do the same thing here. Once this initial approach has been has been um, completed, what we're going to do here now is we're going to roll inverted. And now the camera and the endoscope is facing inferiorly and the disc herniation is located right here. So now your brain has to get used to the idea that you are in essentially the equivalent of inverted flight and um, the disc herniation is now going to be below you but now we've oriented the 30 degree endoscope with the opening in the cannula so we've got a much bigger field of view and here I'm using the bipolar device just to shrink the the fibers sitting on top of the disc herniation I can feel those disc herniations already with a little bit of retraction back and forth with the cannula the herniation starts to express itself and here we're using a endoscopic pituitary grasper to remove the fragment of disc material and in one of these bites here you'll see the, the dominant fragment be released which is one of the most satisfying aspects of modern endoscopic spine surgery is seeing this process occurring in a, in a completely aqueous and bloodless environment. So there's the major fragment of the disc material located there. And then this is what it looks like now that we've rotated back. So we've now gone from our inverted position back to the normal right position. And so here we can appreciate the pedicle and Wagner's arch. We can see the undersurface of the superior articular process. This is now the remnants of the annulus that have now been decompressed so that we can see everything appropriately once the disc herniation has been taken out. And we can rotate the camera back and forth in order to be able to visualize the area where the exiting nerve root would be at the 3-4 level. A little bit of cleanup, a little bit of palpation um, with, the, with the bipolar device in order to be able to feel the top of the pedicle and appreciate Wagner's arch here. And then there's the fragments of disc material room in this particular situation.